This is Peru, and it's got some of the most adventurous food out there. Well, adventurous, interesting, or maybe even downright sad. But that has to do with fluffy things, and we'll get to that later. Peru has turned out to be one of my favorite trips with so many places to explore. Ranging from sandboarding down crazy sand dunes to climbing high altitude summits. But at the end of the day, there's one thing that always brings us together, and that is Peru's delicious food. Each region of Peru is known for different styles of food, and it varies based on the topography and altitude. We're gonna start off the food journey easy with something I think most of us will find palatable, and that is alien fruit. Today I'm in Arequipa in this local market, Mercado San Camillo, in search of this unique Fruit. Although a lot of us call it alien fruit for its unique look and consistency, it's actually called grenadilla. And now I'm in this local fruit market, I'm gonna go try and find some. Hola, uh, tienes uh, grenadilla? Grenadilla, yeah. yeah. Uh, can I have dos? Okay, gracias. It looks like there's hundreds of these little alien eggs. The locals were telling me uh, you want to eat this with the seeds. I've also heard misreviews that the seeds are really bitter, so uh, here we go. So I'm starting just whooshing it around my mouth a little bit. And I thought it was gonna be a bit sour, but it's actually really sweet and really good. Mm. Okay, I just started biting the seeds and instantly it's like, you know those little candy sour patch kids? It's just like my mouth just got full of sour. I, had not, I did not expect that. So the gooey stuff on the outside here, this is all really sweet, but then the seed in the middle, it's like got this bursting sour flavor. It's so unique. My biggest complaints with like a fruit like passion fruit, for me personally, is like a bit too sour, but this grenadilla or alien fruit, it's like perfect. And I don't even mind eating the seeds because it's like goes from that sweet to that sour, so it kind of balances it. It's actually really good. And Peru has so many of these fruit markets all over the place and they're all, there's always something different to find. Sometimes some crazy animal stuff, but for the fruit, it's always delicious all over Peru. Now though, it's time to go explore some more Peruvian food. Next up is the famous seafood dish in this coastal city of Lima, and that is ceviche. We are here now with a beautiful bowl of ceviche here at the Castle del Ceviche in Miraflores. And we're gonna give this a taste you can see how they've marinated here, the citrus juices, you can smell them coming up off the fish. Ceviche is so different compared to fish like Japan and in around North America. It's somewhere of a cross between cooked fish and sushi. Here, they let the fish marinate for about three to five hours in citrus juices, and the juices, because of the acid, actually break down some of the fish, and it's almost the same as cooking. I think the thing I like about this dish the most is how refreshing it is. It's, um, it's not like sitting down and having fish and potatoes. It's really something you could have on the go. Or one, one of our Peruvian friends actually says. In the summertime, I eat ceviche every day. Like, really? It's the best food you're gonna have. It's fresh, you, you're hot, you know you're sweating, and, and the lemon is refreshing. Mm. It's so good. Here in Peru, on the side of their traditional ceviche, they include this Incan corn, which is much bigger than normal corn. I can't wait to dive into the rest of this, which is the most famous dish in Peru. If you were wondering what I was talking about earlier, about cute and fluffy, that's coming next. Right now though, it's time for causa. I'm here in the Amazon rainforest and I've come to a local village to try this delicious potato dish. You can't come to Peru without trying causa. The best way I can describe causa or causa con pollo, meaning causa with the chicken, is it's a light flavory, kind of like potato pie. Um, we have potato pies back in Canada, but they're a lot more rich. Whereas here, it's, it's really light and flavorful. During my time here, it's actually snuck up on me as one of my favorite foods because it's just so light and refreshing and easy to eat. And it comes in a few varieties, kind of like this cake style here, as well as big pies and mackey rolls. No matter where I get it, it's always light and refreshing. The light and refreshing tomato mixed with the potato, avocado, and that kind of chicken salad flavor, it's just so easy to eat more of this. Personally, I love spicy things, and all over Peru, on every table, they always offer us this spicy or picante pico de gallo, and putting it on this, and just with the spice and the mix of refreshing, it's so good. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, or I guess maybe curious about, why does something fluffy and cute belong in a food video? Well, 
let me tell you, that cute and fluffy thing is a guinea pig. <laughs> I'm not actually gonna eat one today. I tried to find one as a cute pet to have on a plate, but couldn't find one in short notice. But here in Peru, it's not an everyday item. It's kind of like their special occasion delicacy dish. So they won't have it on like a Sunday dinner. They'll save it for something really special for weddings. Some people say it's more of a sign of affluence, but the, what they'll do is they'll actually barbecue a full guinea pig or a few if there's a big party and then share it around with their friends. Me personally, since I don't really like eating cute fluffy things and we're not at a Peruvian wedding right now, I'm not gonna eat one here today. But if you're in Peru and you find yourself in a special occasion, you might see one there. We have come out for this special dish. We were told to get this uh, by a bunch of people all over Instagram. This is ricotto relleno. And it is like, uh, it's a pepper, and inside is minced meat with a bunch of cheese and seasoning. It's spicy. <laughs> it's spicy. <coughs> you gotta try this, Michael, it's spicy. Is it insanely spicy? For me it is, yeah. For me, it's very spicy. Okay, so Cody said this was really spicy. Um, fortunately, I'm a little bit more seasoned in spices, but I'm really excited to try this different Peruvian food. It's so messy. Okay, so this is what, beef? I don't know what that is. Let's go. Hmm, you do instantly get a hit of spices. And Rick, I'm like 10 times better at spices than Cody, so this must kill you, man. Dude, I can still feel it. I'm dying. So Cody's dying. I find it more of like a mid-range spice. Definitely hotter than a jalapeno, but not quite habanero yet. But the flavors and the juices like mixed in with the pepper, so good. This is what Cody is gonna like. It looks like it's just pure potatoes and cheese to calm down that L spiciness. Let's see. Mmm. I don't know the name of the cheese, but it tastes like that look, um, lasagna cheese. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I guess that's why they have both of these items on the plate. Because it's a, good mix, right? yeah, it's a really good mix. Like this is so spicy and then it calms down and it's like that opposite flavor and it just like makes a really good whole meal together. Now it's time for the Amazon's animals. First up, the piranha. Oh, no! As you probably already know, these creatures are known for their deadly bite. What you may not have known, however, is their teeth are so sharp that the indigenous people actually used to use them to sharpen their instruments. Whoa! Oh my, oh my god, do you hear that? Now aside from sharpening natives' instruments, piranhas are actually really good eating. They've got a lot of bones, but once you clear them out, apparently they're really delicious. Unfortunately, Cody and I weren't able to catch one, so we didn't get to try it, but we were told from the locals that they're good. They also have tons of fresh fruit that they grow and live off of. And then of course, at nighttime, they go hunting for caimans. Caimans are a type of freshwater crocodile that they eat all over the Amazon. The past month in Peru has been incredible. I've learned so much about this amazing country from its food, culture, and beautiful sights. Before this trip, honestly, Peru wasn't even in my travel radar. But after spending over a month here, it's become one of my favorite all-time beautiful destinations. One of the things I love when traveling is the extreme variety of things to do. And Peru just offers so much with its incredible high altitude climbing and the diversity of food it offers. I hope you enjoyed this Taste of Peru video, and if you like it, I have the top destinations of Peru coming out next week. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to get notified for the next video coming out. Thanks for watching. And next up is quinoa, or more specifically in this case, a quinoa soup. It is so popular around here, and actually Puno, the area of Peru that we're in today, is the birthplace of quinoa.